Can you MIG weld stainless steel exhaust tubing to mild steel exhaust tubing? Make sure you stay tuned to find out. Hi guys, here's what we're working with today. I just got some, uh, it's just gonna be for demonstration purposes because I've had a, a lot of guys ask about, can I weld you know, stainless tubing to mild steel? So we're gonna do a little experimentation here. So these are some leftovers off my 33 Ford that we had from a long time ago. I still had the car, but we took the exhaust off. Uh, I think this is 304, it's two inch stainless pipe and this is two inch mild steel. Uh, I got a, this is how I line mine up. I'm gonna show you how to use this to line up both pieces of tube and use clamps to hold everything together. Just a little neat trick to help you center everything. And what guys used to do back in the 80s and well, I'd say 80s and 90s, but I'd say they still do it. About from your rear end back, you would just get your stainless cause you know, if you've messed this stuff much, this stuff's pretty daggone expensive. It's a pain to work with. It, you know, welding wise and cutting wise, it's just all around pain, but it's cool to have. They would run this from the rear end out the back under the back bumper, and it looked like you had, you know, full stainless exhaust neat. You could polish all this up and stuff, but for a quarter of the price to look like you have stainless exhaust, this is what everybody would do. And I think it's a pretty cool little trick, and it probably save you a lot of money by doing it, but I'm going to show you how to weld this and how to set it up. All right, well, let's get this stuff started fitting up, and uh, we'll go over what I'm going to... My machine settings are really... I'm, I'm going to use the old Millermatic 185 like I always use. My machine settings are really not going to change. I probably, I'm going to set it up, you know, like we always set them up to basically what the thickness of the pipe is. Run it just a little bit cooler than what the chart would call for, like on a 1 inch, so... I'm just running the Red Girl ER70 S-6 023 wires what I'm going to be running so I run on about everything up with this machine here. Um, the proper way really to do this to get your corrosion resistance is you're going to want stainless wire which is expensive and you're going to want I think it's 98.2 which is 98% argon 2% carbon dioxide to be able to get your best corrosion resistance for this but this one is this is an exhaust system going under car. So basically what you're going to have to do, when we're going to weld this up with, like I said, regular mild steel wire. When we weld this, probably up to here, you're going to need to paint from here back because your weld's going to rust because it's, you know, it's mild steel and it'll have a little stainless mixed in with it. But it's going to rust. So what I like to do on this, not this rusty junk, but what I like to do is I'd come up to about here, about an inch forward and tape it off. and throw your pipe in the floor. Anyway, I'd come back to here and I would get some like some VHT header paint, get a silver and uh, just tape it up, paint it from here. And it's gonna blend in real good under the car. Come here. That's all I was saying. All right, let's run over here to machine and I'm gonna uh, show you how we're gonna set this unit up here. Let's see. I didn't even come over here and look yet. All right. Here's what we're going to be running off of. The R70-6. 7525-023. We're going to go up here to gauge. Uh, 1612. There's eighth. Let's see. Come down. To, like to get it burning. We may end up going over to the 3 and 70. We're going to try the 3 and 60 right now just to play around so you want to burn down you don't want big knots on it and i'm gonna show you a neat way for the beginners to weld this it's probably not proper but this is not structural this is exhaust and uh when you're starting to learn to weld like around tubing when you butt weld and stuff there's a lot of changing going on when you're doing this so trying to weld like a full solid bead around here is pretty tough so i'm going to show you what i call trigger welding a lot of people hate it and as for doing structural stuff chassis work and stuff Dude, what's your problem? Like, stay on the table. Anyway, let's go pick this junk up. I'm gonna attach this so we don't have this problem anymore. Bunch of crazy stuff. Too old to be bending over picking up pipe off the floor. So, <laughs> anyways, we're gonna get this thing clamped together. Like I said, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna set it up on three and, ah, heck. 
Yeah, well, let's do 65. We'll just split the difference. We're going to be running our 75-25 at, I think it's about, I always remember when cutting these on because these gauges, you don't want to just ram them on like it. Just barely crack them. Let them go. Then you can turn them on. Uh, we're about at 20, 22, 23, something like that. I like around 18 to 25 CFH is usually what I weld at most of the time. All right, guys, if I can keep these things on the table long enough, I'm going to try to put these together. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use these pieces. Uh, these are one by one eighth inch angle iron. They don't have to be aluminum. I just had the aluminum in the small stuff and I've just cut them to a manageable size. Now it's going to be a little tougher because these are not mandrel bent pipes. They got kinks and dents and stuff in them. They're not going to line up perfect, but this is one way to get everything parallel. Like if you had a long straight run of these things, man, you can put these things on here. Everything's going to be clocked just right. It's not going to be offset or anything, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Now this is two inch pipe. Like I said, these are one inch angle. I've got probably, I'm going to say these are like three inch hose clamps, like radiator hose clamps, whatever. So what you're going to do, you're going to slide one on this side, one on this side, and you're going to want to try to put these like totally apart like this. Get everything lined up to where you want it. All right, so what you're going to do is get this run over here, get them, get everything squared up the best you can. We're going to get them ran down a little bit with the impact. You can do them with a nut driver, but it takes forever. We'll just get them close. Make sure, and when you're doing this and you've got different, it's not just a straight, make sure you have a line. I don't care. This is just for demonstration. I'm going to cut it back apart and throw it in scrap when we get done with it. But make sure you, you get a line the way you want and put you maybe a triangle over the cut or put a couple lines so you can get everything clocked right. So we're going to get this one here. And after you get this tacked, you can just take it apart. But if you're using a nut driver, it will take you forever. So if you got a cordless drill, Sure all our ends are together good the way we want them. Run this down. Get me a little bit more on it. My cut's a little off, I didn't fine tune her, but you get the gist of it. It lines everything up and holds it clamped into place. We get a couple tacks put on this and we'll pull this all back apart and uh, get her burn in. Show you how it looks. I may try to do two different welds on it. I'll show you the one, the, the trigger weld and I'll talk about maybe on one side and then just burn a straight bead over here. The only probably gonna run in, especially when you got a gap. You wanna get them fit up better than this. This was just to throw together so I can show you guys how to do this. But, I'll maybe uh, run one. When you run this long bead like this, a lot of times for beginners, you have run into trouble of burning through and getting too hot. If you stay in a place too long, it'll just blow out, especially with a little bit of gap. And you're probably gonna have, unless you're in the perfect world, gonna have a little bit of a gap, but. All right, guys, well, that tack here looks pretty good. It's good and laid down, good and flat. It's not standing up. I don't know if you can see it good on the camera, but it's uh, not standing up real tall. So I think that, uh, three on the the amperage and the 65 on the wire feed speed it must be pretty good so we're gonna get the other side tacked here and uh to make your best looking wells we may come back and knock the, the heads of those tacks also when you run over it a lot of times it'll make a jump like a bump over top of it so we'll get it tacked in about four play here and top both sides and then we'll come back and just knock the heads off of that then we'll weld in and quarters it's what you want to do if you can. It keeps you from having to change gun angles all crazy and stuff. So just weld it in just uh, light quarters around. You don't have to try to robot burn this bad boy in all at one time unless you got a fixture or one of them rotary table things. So let's get a, another tack on this side and get the burn this unit in. Now right here we got a little bit of a gap and this is a little tip also. What I'll do is I'll probably do what you'll hear it 
attack twice and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do attack on half of the stainless and an attack on half of the steel if you have a, a gap and it'll make it a little easier. Let me get in a, get you a close shot in on this so you guys can see that just in case you have a gap because a lot of times if you're welding this under a car and you're not welding on the on a table like this which is optimal you're going to have some gaps and stuff you may have to fill so let me get you in a little closer here and I'm going to show you you just halfway do a zap here, a zap here, let them burn together, and you'll have your tack. So let's do that. All right, what you're going to see me do is I'm going to weld about halfway up from this cut on this half and this half, and we'll just burn them both together. This is not that big of a gap. I just kind of want to show you guys this in case you run into some bigger gaps. And maybe in a future video, if you guys want to see it, we'll do a, how to weld up a gap on an exhaust pipe because I saw some guys weld some stuff about that big. Try not to get it that way, but, you know, sometimes stuff happens and you just... You gotta fill a gap, and it's not, especially on stainless, you don't wanna chunk it. So, all right, let's bridge just a little gap. Like I said, it may bridge by itself, but I'm just gonna show it to you. You see how I bridge the aim towards the center, and it just kind of float over that way and float over that way, so. That's how you bridge the gap. Definitely with a crack like this, you're gonna have to trigger weld it, and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. All right, let's get our little bracket here taken apart. Yeah, like I said, if you got a... Now, this will kind of booger your clamps up a little bit. You can't bend them back. These are stainless, so they'll come back. But now, this exhaust system's not hooked to anything, so we can just back them off, slide them off. But if you need to, we'll do this one. You can take them completely apart. So don't think... Some of you guys that haven't worked with them a lot, don't think you can't take them apart. And we'll probably save these because you can see it comes across that. It, they may, yeah, not too bad. We may save it. I may just uh, put these in my toolbox just together, take these together or something, and make this my exhaust clamp welding fixture setup thingamajigger. Get them straightened out the best we can. We put our little angle iron. Like these are three and a half inches long, I think is what they are. It seems to be a pretty good length. And uh, I didn't think about this before, but what we could have done to help us get a few more tacks is you could come up here and just cut you a notch to give you a place to tack in between. And the good thing about this being aluminum, it is a heat sink, but it won't weld to the, if you get in here MIG weld and you won't weld it to the piece. So maybe just the, I think I got this stuff from like uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or, Check it out. Good and tack. Look how straight everything's good and aligned. That does the trick right there. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to come around here. I'm going to put a tack on the top. And I'm going to do a tack on the, would it be the bottom, whichever way. I'm going to tack it. Then we're just going to weld quarters in between it. Like that. So we're going to do the trigger weld. And it almost, a lot of people used to cheat and uh, say this is stacking down. What you'll get it is basically how you do this. Is you'll get there and you'll weld you'll just do a hot spot you move over half the size of the spot and as the orange is going away on it you don't want to totally cool off you want as the orange goes away you want to zap it again then move half a spot zap it again this they're good hot tacks and uh, a lot of times they'll melt into each other but what they say is you can get cold lap on it and it's like just not a fuse together around there in it. I can see how that could happen if you don't have your settings just right on anything structural. So I wouldn't advise, especially for beginners, to use that as a structural, anything that could break and harm anybody. So you got to take this stuff very seriously. But exhaust, get it burned in, it's not going to go nowhere. So here we go, a couple more tacks. And I'll link some of these pliers. These things are great here. You always want to clip because you'll get this old porosity looking balled up junk on any wire. Or I always, I just always uh, clip them off stuff. I, I link some of this stuff that I use, like the holders and all that stuff, in my uh, Amazon affiliate account below. Link that description below. So we'll get some tack here. get y'all in a little bit closer and I'm gonna show you the trigger weld method all right we're gonna go ahead and knock these tacks down like we talked about before I forget and it they're not high at all but you know if you can get them knocked down it'd be a whole lot better for 
not getting the build up so it looks better. Alright guys, now we're going to start the trigger well. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to start on half of this tack here and just hold this first one where it'll burn in the halfway into this one. Then we're just going to go like a, I'm going to say a two, I'm going to call it a two step. You're just going to go two seconds, two seconds, and what you're going to do is you're going to overlap each one of them things. When you do this hot one and, and you'll start seeing the orange glow go away, you just nail about halfway in between that thing again, let the orange start going away and just keep doing that. And it, if you can keep your spacing right, you'll have a, a kind of a stack down look. What gives it away is, is where the wire pulls out. You'll have a little pinhole right there. Like I said, on structural stuff, suspension stuff, that's, that's not good. You don't want any of that. But as for this exhaust, you're more than good to do that. But we're going to get going. We're going to start here and go to this tack. This is the one with the gap, so we're gonna have to work it a little bit. So you might have to let it cool a little more on it, see how it melts out around. We'll just keep doing the same thing. We'll just keep going, letting it cool. When we get to the tighter one, you can just run with it. Yeah, it's not too horrible looking there. I mean, it's not the greatest. Like I said, we had to work with that big gap there, but you'll notice when we get around to the other side, it's gonna look a little bit better, but that's not bad at all, I don't think. It's not built up real high either. All right, now this one here has a lot tighter gap, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start, we're gonna throw a hot tack, maybe wash back into that last tack just about a quarter of the way back, and then we'll just go. I think I'm gonna turn the wire wire speed up it's what it was showing me it was burning away a little bit and if you see it burning back a little too much you can either drop your heat but I kind of like my heat setting because we're getting good penetration I think I'm gonna add a little more wire into it and see if that'll help any sometimes when you add more wire it'll cool the puddle off just a little and uh, so we're gonna go up to the 70 remember we had it on 65 so we're gonna jump up to the 70 real quick and uh, see how that does this is why you want to practice. Get you some scrap stuff and set up some practice before you get under the car and get yourself in a bind and you'll have her dialed in, tuned, ready to arc and spark and looking like a hero under there. And I'm going to do this the same way. I'm just going to zap it, zap it, zap it, watch the red go away and see if we can get one look a little bit better. pretty good there and I'm gonna show you what I was talking about with the little pin holes but the good thing about this uh, trigger web this zap zap for a beginner it gives you time to reset yourself as you go around and like I said after you get more comfortable welding and stuff you can uh, just burn it. we're gonna do this real time here so you can see if I mess it up or not it has a pretty tight gap so uh, now when you start on this you're gonna get in here and what I like to do is I like to V my fingers and it works as a prop and you can lay your uh, get your torch up or your gun up here get it set pull the trigger and just rotate down like that I'll show you a little better angle all right guys I'm gonna show you my little way I prop when I do this because once you when you pull the trigger you got to roll with this right here you just can't hang out because you'll burn a hole especially on this old rotten stuff but what I do is I like to V my fingers and I'll set my fingers on it to where it'll Kind of works like a little fixture thing to where you can move your hand. And what you're going to do is I prop my hand, make sure you got your wire not touching anything, and V your fingers like that and just prop the end of the nozzle. Get your angle. You may have to go to these two fingers to get a little higher. Just uh, get the way you need to. And you can just uh, set your gun right there and just take your wrist and move it down. 
and it helps you keep the angle because as you're going, it, it takes a while to get used to this because you're having to roll this to keep the right angle. But if you got something to steady to keep your height and stuff right there, it's one less thing you have to worry about when you're starting out. So I don't think we just got to go to this tack here. Don't try to go too far. And if this is too far for you, put your tack here and go an eighth way, an eighth way. Just a better weld is better than trying to show off and try to go around because I, I can't. These quarters are about as far as I want to go. So like I said, we'll just be our fingers. I'll get going here and we'll just pull the trigger and go and stop right here. All right, guys, now it's time to be a hero or zero. I don't know what this is going to look like, but y'all going to see it. I ain't going to, like I said, I don't, I don't get them perfect all the time. So I don't want you to see <laughs> trickier for me because I don't do this a lot. Like I said, if you do this a lot, you can uh, be a whole lot better. So we're going to do the V, get our height set right on here, and then just roll around. Do you a couple practice runs, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, here we go. I kind of slipped there at the end if you saw it. <laughs> My hand slipped. All right guys, well here it is. I don't really like these looks of these welds now. They're good and flat and they're penetrating good and they're not going to break. Temperature looks pretty good on the stainless. You can start seeing a little color right here where it's oxidizing, but yeah, right here, if you saw when I was going, you see that booger right there, the way it, it kind of jumped? It, my hand slipped right there. <laughs> that's, that's why I don't like doing these to where you just got a rocket wide open, but like I said, that's it. But I'm going to finish the rest of these off. I may, to where I got that big booger where I messed that up, I may come back and grind this back down. It's under a car. If they're like my cars, they're so low, they're gonna drag the welds off anyway, so. All right, let's get back to the trigger. But like I said, when you start with this, you got to roll with it and that's it. Because now it didn't burn through or anything. It looks like it took good to the weld and it's set good and flat. But you gotta be committed on that, you can't stop. But give it a practice. That's not bad, that's a pretty flush weld actually. I could probably grind that and you never see it. All right guys, we'll try one more time. I'm gonna do the V thing and see if I can, uh, not mess up. Clean this off. Check my end. Do a little practice run. Here we go. <laughs> it happened. Just a little bit of a gap. So since I boogered this up, I'm going to show you guys a way to fix it. All right, guys, I'll keep it real with you all. So you can see there's just a little bit of gap right here in this rot. And I don't know if that rot and stuff had anything to do with it or not, but I didn't want to edit this out because I want to show you guys how to fix this. It's stuff like this is going to happen. Some guys it may not, but it happens to me. And we'll have to come back and grind these big old boogers off here, but we're gonna clean this really good. We're gonna come back with the trigger weld on this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right there into that groove right here and just bzzz, and then buzz, buzz, and this bridge that gap right there. And then we're not gonna worry about washing over this. This is good and penetrated, it ain't going nowhere. So we'll come back here and uh, we're just gonna get that crack and we're just gonna, we may have to work it around like that. Just watch what it does, just tack it. And if, it, if it's not burning back away, you can just keep tacking, but you'll notice it'll get like a little oval shape here if it starts burning back too far. So we'll just go in here and bridge this back and forth and get that good and we'll just knock that off with the grinder. And you can, if you're looking for, you want these little welds, little stack looking welds and stuff, you can come back and grind it pretty flat and uh, cut your wire speed back a little bit because you're just gonna be basically faking it, but don't tell nobody. Just lay it on top of that, zap, 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 like we did before, and uh, we'll get it fixed. But yeah, I want to show you guys this, what, when stuff happens, you gotta be able to fix it. It ain't all rainbows and unicorns around here, people. Let's fire it up. I'm gonna get her dead here. Same settings, three and six, 70. <laughs> Had to get it right there. All right, first we're gonna bridge this one up here. Now we're going to go over to this side. We're going to go to this side.
Now we should be able to come in here and just fill this hole. We'll try it. We'll just zap, zap, zap back a little bit real quick. All right, that hole's fixed. I'm gonna uh, darken it up a little bit so maybe you guys can see it a little better. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go on that back here in this corner, fill it up, then walk side to side and just whatever it needs, just watch what it does. You can see how that big old wormhole come out of pulling rust out of that pipe, I think. Let's burn that off. There she is. She closed up. Well, not the prettiest thing in the world. Wouldn't pass for a Riddler car, but hey, it'll pass for you guys burning the road up with your hot rod. Like I said, guys, you can grind this stuff down and just paint it. I mean, you know, if you don't like it, I don't care. And what you can do is go back and uh, shine your flashlight around, see if you got any pinholes. You need to fix any pinholes. You don't want any exhaust leaks. But like I said, this is 304 stainless to some rusty junk mild steel. I wouldn't advise putting anything as rusty on it's what I had laying around. Like that porosity, I I had to go back and look at the arc shot on it just to see how it came out. It was like a little, if you ever see a little worm thing come out like that, I don't think, because it's hollow on the inside, it's like a tube, but it picks up porosity, trash, dirt, grease, in this case, probably rust, and it just pulls it out. So what you can do is, you can come back and grind it off, or you can do like I did, you can just start your bead and just wash over it and it'll burn off. Now, don't do that for structural stuff, but exhaust is a little more forgiving you don't want it falling off breaking this is not going to all right guys this is the one where we just uh filled everything in like i said it's not horrible it's, it's a little knotted up here we could probably grind that i'm not going to because like i said i'm gonna cut this whole thing out yeah you can see this is the one where i got a little my hand slipped right here but you see all these little pin oh that's what i was talking about when you do the trigger weld you're gonna have that now a little bit thicker stuff you can get a little hotter and move over and cover these up but like i said i'm gonna show you how stuff goes on and it i probably wouldn't have as trouble as much with the with good metal this stuff is like super rusty i should have sandblasted it i guess and got most of it out but if any of you know it's dealt with rusty stuff well i think once this stuff rusts it gets down in the inside it and it just causes trouble but yeah that's our stainless steel to rusty mild steel even though this looks bad, you can have you some shiny pipes sticking out behind your car. Alright guys, hope y'all enjoyed this little video on how to weld some mild steel to stainless steel exhaust. Maybe y'all help y'all out on y'all's hot rod. I hope you learned that's why I didn't cut any of my mistakes out, or not mistakes, but just stuff that's going to happen during welding like this. You're going to blow holes. I tried to show you how to fix it. So make sure you drop down in the comments if there's anything else. Like I said, I had a lot of people ask about the stack. Can you MIG weld stainless to mild steel? And I hope this helped you out. And make sure you like and subscribe and share and keep helping this channel grow. We're growing pretty good. I appreciate all you guys and all your questions and stuff like that. And I hope I'm helping you guys out some on this and helping you get your projects done. That's the main thing. Don't let a project sit in the shop. I'm bad about doing that. But anyways, don't let stuff sit around. Go out there. It ain't got to be perfect. Get it as good as you can. And I'll thank you guys for watching this, supporting this channel. And remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.